we can all draw from what he calls the plague era. On the one hand, straight people have a lot to learn from the way gay people responded to AIDS. But gay people have some difficult truths to face up to too, about the emptiness of promiscuity, about the kinds of relationships they have, and about the extent to which they are or are not normal. Nigella, what's Sullivan's argument? Well, I think what he's trying to challenge most is what makes gayness or how do predominantly men he's talking about become homosexual. And I think what he does as well is he's challenging this conventional idea with, of, of the whole genesis of homosexuality, which we all know is over-clingy, mummy, distant daddy. And what he's saying is you're mixing up cause and effect because what it is is that the parents, the, the child is gay, the parents just sense this from a very early age in the child's development. And it, automatically, the father recedes out of both fear and a general sense of, uh, of being sensitive to, these, to the erotic feelings that the child places on him. The mother compensates by being overprotective, and that's the way around it is. And of course, this sets up, he says, you know, the, the sort of whole pattern of damage in the child, which then leads to what he sees is very unhelpful behaviour and all that promiscuity. So the, gay, so the gay child sort of makes the parents rather than the parents make the gay child? Well, that's exactly what he says, and he, he gives a very convincing case for that, I think. Um, and what's his conclusion? What do you do about it? Well, his conclusion mostly seems to be that uh, if is same-sex marriage, this has been, a sort of been in his bonnet for some time, and he thinks that if, if, if gay men at, could get married, then their relationships would not be seen as lesser to heterosexual relationships, and then the, the whole pattern of damage could be avoided. Simon, so, mean, this, this book starts with almost, if you like, the dispatch by Sullivan from the end of a war. Um, more uh, young men died through AIDS in America than died in the Vietnam War, and it has that kind of feeling. When you read that, did, did that ring true for you? Oh, it's incontestable. I mean, it's not a matter of opinion. Uh, I think he says five times as many men died from AIDS at time of writing as died in the Vietnam War. But he also says it's sort of time to move on, that it has this kind of post-war well, feeling. I think it's very important to say, I think he, as the author, would very much like one to say that basically the book is about friendship. It's, it's about a number of things. As you said, it's three linked essays. And the first one is about what is going to happen to the gay world now that AIDS is at an end. Because for 10 years, AIDS has defined homosexuality. And it has made profound differences to our lives as gay people, naturally to all of us. Um, the second essay is uh, 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 indeed about this, this crucial matter. He says, well, come on, I need, I, he needed, he himself, Andrew Sullivan, has AIDS. He is one of the people who is held together by combination therapy sure. at the moment. And it sort of limits his life to some extent, but now he's able at least to think and breathe and uh, behave like, a, like a, a regular human being. And he said that in this moment of crisis, having faced this overpowering shattering um, revelation that he had AIDS, um, uh, that he was, two things happened to him. And it's important, I think, to say both of these things. One is that he had intimations of God 